Hey there, welcome back to my build series on this LDO Voron 0.2 printer kit. Uh, it stopped being a build series now and it's more like a printer calibration series as we tune this thing up and get it ready to be printing full time here in my setup. So I want to do a quick experiment today. I want to look at the different build plates that came with this printer kit and actually one additional one that I purchased myself. And I want to try to set up Orca Slicer so that when we switch out the build plate on here, I don't have to recalibrate the Z height, right? Because this thing doesn't have any type of Z probe or anything like that on this type of printer. It just has the end stop switch. And so currently, if I switch out these build plates because they're ever so slightly different in thickness from one another, I'm going to have to recalibrate that Z height each time and I want to avoid that. So we're going to find a solution for that today in Orca Slicer and then we're going to do some test prints specifically with this build plate because it has this kind of carbon fiber looking texture on it and I haven't used this plate at all yet. It just came with the kit and I think I mentioned it in an earlier video in the series but I still have not printed on it. So I want to see what this looks like uh, you know as far as the first layer goes when we print something you know kind of large and flat on this plate. We'll try that out later on in this video. Um, First, I wanted to just talk about the three build plates that I have here. Uh, two of them came with the kit. So this kit is an LDO kit, but I bought it online through Fabrico, and they included some extra Honey Badger branded parts as well, and that includes the build plates. And so this build plate uh, came with the kit. It says Honey Badger by Fabrico on it, and it's just kind of your standard textured PEI plate, so it's got a fairly uh, kind of coarse texture on this side, and then it's just completely smooth and flat on this side. Um, so that's kind of a standard plate you'd get with a lot of different printer kits. Um, this one that I've already held up for the camera here is the other one that came with the kit. Um, it actually says Honey Badger P Series on the branding here. And on one side, it's, I'd say smooth, but it has kind of a soft smooth feel to it. It's definitely different from the smooth uh, side of this plate here. And then on the flip side here is the one that I'm interested in specifically for today. Actually, we'll probably print on both sides of this today just to see what this side looks like as well. Uh, but this has got this kind of carbon fiber looking texture etched into it. So I'm curious to see how much of this transfers off to the first layer of our print. Um, and then the third plate that I have, this one I purchased myself. It again is Honey Badger branded. Um, and they call this their uh, satin PEI textured plate. So this has some texture to it. Uh, but it's a whole lot less of a texture than this, uh, you know, the coarse texture on this one. Uh, both sides are the same on this particular plate. And um, yeah, I really like this one. This is the one I've, uh, that I've currently got this printer configured to use as far as Z height. And it's the one I've been using for most of my test prints so far. Um, I actually have a big one on my big Voron printer as well. And I use it almost exclusively on that printer. So I, yeah, I like this one a lot. The adhesion of the first layer is always great. Um, once I've got it dialed in and I just like the the kind of smooth but slightly textured uh, finish that it leaves on that first layer. So this one the printer's already configured for and we've already used it quite a bit. The other two we haven't and so before we can use them what I'm thinking is I'm going to grab my digital calipers and I'm going to go over to the build desk. Uh, we'll switch over there in just a second. I'm going to measure the thicknesses of these things so I can figure out their relative thicknesses to each other. We'll use this as kind of the baseline and then we'll adjust from there for these other two within Orca Slicer's settings and try to get it so that we can swap these plates out on the printer uh, you know, without having to adjust anything else. And then we'll do some test prints specifically with this one and see what it turns out to look like. So with all that said, let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Orca Slicer, and this is my plan for handling these different build plates. Under our printer configuration up here, there is an option for bed type, and it's like a drop down, but it's disabled. And so to enable that, first of all, what we have to do is go into our printer configuration here, and there's an option for support multi bed types. So if we turn this on and we go ahead and save this and we'll close this out, we can now see that this bed type drop down is enabled and we can choose something from this list. Now currently the list has four things and at least as of the time of this recording, Orca Slicer doesn't allow you to create your own or rename these existing types of, of build plates. You just have to go with the four that it offers. So these don't, you know, naming wise don't map directly to the plates that I have here. But what I've decided to do is this smooth PEI plate, which is the default, will be the satin PEI that I use most of the time on the printer. And then for textured PEI plate, that'll be our textured one, the, the coarser texture. And then we're going to use this name engineering plate for the special one that has the carbon fiber texture on it. So if you're watching this far in the future, 
uh, the Orca Slicer folks may have added the ability for you to rename these or to create your own. Uh, but for now, these are the four. This, this is what we've got to deal with. And so I will also link in the description of this video the documentation currently over on the Orca Slicer GitHub that talks about multiple bed types. And again, this might be updated in the future if they add some additional options. But this shows you here what the names of the four types are and also gives you some code that you can use um, you know, to select to change some parameters or do whatever you want based on what the current bed type is. So I'm gonna just gonna copy this because we're gonna use it in a minute over in Orca Slicer. And we'll go back over there and go ahead and start to play a bit with these settings. So I think what I wanna do is in my mach machine G code, when I start my print, so the machine start, before we actually call our print start macro, we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of adjustment based on what build plate we're using, right? And so I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in, that code that we copied from the GitHub page. And what this says is if the current bed type is the textured PEI plate, it's gonna modify the G code offset by some amount. I don't know what this amount needs to be yet. We'll figure that in, out in just a second. Otherwise, it's gonna leave the G code offset of, uh, at zero, which just means whatever the default is that's already in the printer. Now we're gonna have two different options here, right? So we need an else if here for our third option. So if the current bed type is going to be, uh, what was it called, engineering plate, I believe. If, if that's the case, then we're also gonna do some sort of set G-code offset for that as well. So this is what it's gonna look like. We just have to figure out what these two question marks need to be. And so I'm going to do some measurements here with my calipers, right? So this is our default plate. This is, no, this is our default plate here in the middle. This is the, the satin PEI texture. And let's make sure that these are zero, they are. So I'm gonna take some measurements around the outside edges of this thing and try to kind of get an average because it's not gonna be exactly the same thickness all the way around. So I'm getting somewhere around like between 0.7 and 0.75 it looks like for most of these thicknesses. Yeah. So about 0.72 is what I'm gonna say for this guy. And then this one, the texture one is much thinner. So I've got a 0.43 there, 0.48 there, 44, 49, 43. So about 0.45. So we're gonna say 0 0.45, 0 0.72, and then this very thickest one is 0.99, 1.01, so I'm gonna say 1.0 for this guy. 1.02, yeah, 0.98, yeah. So 1.0 for 1.0 millimeters for this one, 0.72 and 0.45, I think is what we said. So switching back over here, we can enter the deltas here, right? So if our engineering plate, which is our thick one, is 1.0, and our, uh, our default is 0.72, right? Then the offset, the difference here would be a positive 0 0.28. And then if our thin one was 0.45, we do 0 0.72 minus 0.45, and then we want this one to be narrower, so we get minus 0 0.27, is that correct? Yeah, I believe that's right. And so those will be our starting values here. And uh, what I'm gonna need to do now is do some test prints. Uh, so I'm just gonna do like a single layer or maybe two layer little square and go ahead and send it over to the printer with these different plates selected, right? So now if I save this and we go back over here and I pick you know, the textured plate and I slice a print and send it over there, it will have that, G, that offset, that Z offset included in its G code at the start of the print. And so we should get the print head closer to the bed by the amount that we asked for there. And so what I'm gonna do is, like I said, do a couple of first layer test prints. I won't show those here on video. And I may need to adjust those values that I put into here ever so slightly, you know, by like a 10th or hundred or probably hundredths of millimeter up and down to get 
the perfect first layer that I like with each of these different uh, extra types of plates. And then once I've got those dialed in, they should be good to go every time we swap plates in the future. Um, the other thing I'm gonna do actually while I'm in here is I'm just gonna grab this reset of the G-code offset to zero, and I'm gonna paste that down here after we stop our print as well, just to put the printer back into a state where it's not, it doesn't have any type of a, of a offset on its uh, Z when we finish to print. So yeah, that's good too as well, to just to reset things. So with that, I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna do a bunch of uh, kind of one and two layer test prints over there with these different plates and get that, get these values all dialed in. I'll come back and show you what I ended up with here so we can see how different they are than uh, what, what our estimate was based on our measurements. And then uh, once we get that done, we'll go and do some test prints on that uh, carbon fiber textured plate, see what those look like. Okay, so I've done my test prints. I ended up printing a couple per plate to get these dialed in just right. So these are the settings I ended up with, minus 0.24 for our G-code offset for the textured plate, and then that thicker plate ended up as a positive 0.38. So this one we were off by like a tenth of a millimeter based on the measurements that we had taken. So it's definitely good to uh, then go and print after just taking those measurements. Don't just don't just put them in, go and test it and make sure that, that what you're seeing is uh, looking good. And so these are the numbers I ended up with and my final prints, uh, as far as that testing goes, you'll see here, uh, what I ended up doing was just generating the flow calibration print within Orca Slicer and then deleting all of the numbers around the outside edge. So I just printed the zero chip basically for those. Um, this one got bent a little when I pulled it off the build plate because I didn't let it cool fully. And so it is bent a little, but this was the textured one. Um, it's got a nice texture on it and you can't really see uh, any of the individual, uh, you know, extrusion lines with uh, that very thin nozzle that we were extruding with. Again, I'm, I'm working with a 0.25 millimeter nozzle here on this printer and so, and a 0.1 millimeter layer height. So everything is very finely detailed, uh, but I don't see any lines there, so that's great. Um, this one was on the smooth side of that thick plate, the one that has the carbon fiber texture. So this is just the smooth side of that. Um, it came out looking nice and smooth, and actually the feel of this I really, really, really like. Um, and the adhesion of the first layer to the bed was also very good with this. So I wasn't expecting necessarily to like or to use that particular side of that plate, um, as much as I might actually now that I've seen how it looks. So that one looks good. And then this was the carbon fiber side of that plate. Um, and here you can see if I get the light to catch the right angle, that texture, you know, that pattern did um, imprint itself a bit on the print here. And if I feel it, there is ever so slightly a bit of roughness to it. So you can kind of feel that texture, but in general, it's fairly smooth as far as the feel goes. Um, and it's got that kind of look to it. Now I realized after doing this that this kind of matte gray filament is probably not the best for showing off a texture like that. Um, and I don't have any like silk PLAs or anything exotic like that that uh, we can use to test that. But what I am gonna do is probably go ahead and put the uh, ABS filament that we had used in the past um, that's kind of goldish colored back into the printer for this next test print because I think that it'll show the texture on the build plate just a little bit better. And so what I've done here is I've loaded in this STL of this Gunpla Gallery coin. Uh, I guess I should mention, I don't normally promote it here, but gunplagallery.com is a website that I created a few years ago for uh, people who build Gundam plastic model kits online to create photo galleries of their kits. Uh, it's free to use and lots of builders, uh, new first time builders all the way up to people who enter their, their builds into competitions have used it for posting photo galleries. And so if you're curious, I'll leave the link in the description of this video. You can go look around there at some of the cool things that people are creating and painting up and, and building in the uh, Gundam model kit community. However, for the purposes of this, I think it'll be a good test print because it's got this nice big flat surface on the bottom. And so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that we have our Polymaker ABS selected and our engineering plate. That is the correct build plate here for this textured one. And I'll go ahead and slice this thing up and we can see, you know, it's fairly simple here and it's got this nice big flat surface. So it should show our carbon fiber looking texture. Um, again, with this other kind of gold colored filament, it's not like a shiny gold, but I think it'll do a better job than the matte uh, gray PLA of showing that texture. So I'm gonna go ahead and send this over to the printer and we'll take a look at it when it's done printing.
All right, so here we are. I printed a couple copies of this coin, and here's the backside of these things. So this one here was printed on this with this side of the build plate. So this was down on this here, and you can see if you, if I get it in the right light, if I catch it just right, you can kind of see that pattern. Um, to my eyes here, like when you're not looking at it in with light shining on it, it looks more just like a little squares or something on there. You don't really see exactly the same uh, texture as you see here on the plate. Um, so for me, it's not like it's fine, but it's not anything special. And probably uh, I don't imagine that I will be using this plate that much, you know, for real prints or anything like that. However, the other side of this, um, which now has fingerprints all over it because of pulling it off the printer um, and touching it with my greasy fingers, but the other side of this uh, produces this really nice, uh, perfectly kind of buttery smooth to the touch kind of finish. And I wasn't expecting to like this as much as I do. Um, if you look really close, you can see it's actually under extruded in a couple spots, like right up in here. So I don't know that I have either, maybe it's the flow rate for this filament, or maybe it is the height of, you know, the Z height that we were calibrating earlier and tweaking just a little bit. Maybe I need to adjust that just a touch more to get just a tiny bit more squish on this first layer. Um, but the feel of this is, is like amazing. Uh, I think if I were to print, you know, maybe if I was printing like a phone case or some other um, case for an electronics device or something like that, I might print that uh, with its, you know, front face down on this kind of a, of a bed um, because the feel of it is just so, so good. Um, so that was a bit surprising to me to, to find that I like this one as much as I do. So anyway, if I do use this uh, build plate in the future, I'm probably going to use this side of it rather than that other textured side of it. Before we go, there was one other thing I wanted to mention that I didn't realize earlier um, until I went to print with this Polymaker ABS filament. And that is that, remember back at the very beginning when we turned on multiple bed types for this printer to enable this uh, drop down up here, what actually uh, one side effect of turning that on becomes that uh, in your filament setups, it shows you all four of the different types of build plates as well, and lets you set different bed temperatures for those. And so you can see now I've got them all set to 110, which is the temperature I like for this particular filament. But this had defaulted, you know, for all of the ones that weren't the, the type of build plate that I was using before, which was this smooth PEI plate for the new ones that appeared here, they all defaulted to like either 100 or 105. I don't remember what it was. In any case, they were a little bit cool. And so the first couple of uh, test prints that I did uh, peeled up off the bed just at the edges just a little bit because I didn't have them quite as hot as I normally would. So just keep in mind, if you turn on that option for your printer, all of your uh, filament profiles are going to suddenly have extra temperatures that you can set for the bed temperature for the different types of plates. And uh, you know, in my case, I wanted to set them all the same. So I just went through all of my filament presets and I copied and pasted whatever the value was for the smooth PEI plate, which is what I had in there before into all of these other fields. So anyway, that's just to keep in mind in case you do this, um, you might run into that as well and you might be heating your bed to different temperatures depending on which build plate you're using, which you know might be a feature you want, but in my case, I wanted them all to be the same. So I think uh, with that said, that is kind of the end of this episode. I'm happy with the result. I probably, like I said earlier, will just use that uh, satin PEI plate, the one I've been using mostly, uh, will be the one that sits in this printer most of the time and most of my prints will just be using that. However, it's good to know that if I want to use other types of plates, I can always just as long as I remember when I'm slicing the print to pull this down and choose the appropriate thing, you know, for textured or for the smooth one that I normally use or for this special one that I've been using for these test prints today, just pick the right one here. And then when I slice my print, it will automatically then be sending the right G code over to my printer to get the Z height dialed in correctly so that I don't have to do it manually when I switch these, uh, these build plates in and out. So, yeah, that's going to do it for today. If you have uh, you know thoughts or suggestions about this approach, um, if you've got a different way of doing it, um, or if you know anything about um, Orca Slicer and the support for these different bed types and whether there's going to be uh, the ability to create your own and name your own in the future, because I really would like to have that ability. Let me know about those things down in the comments. Otherwise, I hope you found this one uh, helpful, and I will see you in the next one, and I hope you have a good day.